guys, it's Sam, and this is my spoilery gush for The Silvered Serpents by Roshni Chakshi. As I said, this video will have spoilers in it, so if you have not read this book, I will link my spoiler free review on the screen. So at the end of the last book, if you watched my gush for that, which I'll probably link on the screen at some point throughout this video, I was feeling so many feelings, and I reread The Guild of Wolves right before reading this, so I, that was all fresh in my mind. And really, like, what was gonna happen with, like, the Layla Severin, all of their grief over Tristan, like, what was gonna happen. But like I really didn't expect a lot of the things that did happen in here. Things took different twists that I wasn't necessarily expecting that weren't bad necessarily, but like I got my hopes up for some things that like didn't quite happen in here, which was like a little sad. But I still was very much enjoying this story. So like I mentioned in my review, as far as the world, I just didn't find this world as lush as the first book. Like I liked the sleeping palace and some of the imagery there. A lot of the ice stuff and like the ice um, creatures, especially with the ice like animals was really cool, like the Leviathan. But I just missed how, like, widespread the imagery was in the first book and, like, the different houses. Like, House Nyx was so cool and House Corey was so cool and, like, the Greek mythology and that and all of that was, like, really cool. And then, like, the, the World's Fair and everything that was in the first book was just, like, a lot. And, like, Lydon and everything. So with this book being like just a sleeping palace we're getting, like, more, I was like, oh, I just want, like, I just want more. Like, it wasn't bad. It was just in comparison to the first book, it was like I missed some of that like lushness. At the same time, I think that was like a very... I, I could see this being like a choice. You know, like this book is so much like sadder and angstier and darker, so them being in like a dark, you know, like icy area, secluded from everything else, like that makes sense as like a whole thing. So maybe that was like very intentional. So most of the time is going to be spent talking about the characters and everything that was going on with them. I was just, I'm just so sad for everybody. Like it just, everything kind of sucks. Some of it is Severin's fault because Severin in this book, like I still love him deeply. And I would say I love Severin more than like a lot of these like angsty not feeling crew leaders that you get in these like kind of books, you know, because he, he is so concealed don't feel. <laughs> don't let it show. But like, getting to see his point of view and seeing him being this like awful mean person, but then you get to see him like inside his head, you're just like, Severin, stop! Like, stop hurting everyone else! Stop hurting yourself! Like, use your words! You know, like, you're, but I, it, it still, oh, it hurt me. And just like, especially what he did to like, everybody else, like when Enrique finds out that like, he sabotaged his like, speech and stuff, like, hmm, just sad. And like, just how mean he was to like, Layla, which I usually don't forgive, but I think because of everything that we get to see in his head, I'm a little bit more lenient, but I'm also like, you better make things up to her a ton in book three. But let's go back. And first, the one of the things that I was like, really like, ooh, about in the first book was the whole sort of like, Enrique, Hypnos, Sophia, like, potential love triangle thing that was going on there. And I thought that was handled really interestingly in here because you have him and Hypnos kind of get together at the end of last book and Sophia kind of be like eh and then they're kind of together in this book but very quickly the other characters start to realize that like Hypnos isn't as invested in Enrique as Enrique is in him and then it's just like it, it's no hard feelings thing it's just like this is just kind of how Hypnos is it's not really like looked down on which I think was like very skillfully done because you could have made that be just like oh he's like just like a slutty whatever like and it wasn't really that it was just like well that's just not how he connects, you know? And he even says at one point when they're like breaking up, he's like, I could have grown to love you, I think. And, and and Enrique's like, you know, yes, but like, I need something more. And it was just like, it was a very mature conversation, a very mature way of like ending that without making it seem like, oh, we're ending this dynamic so that he can get with Sophia. But then it also makes it very clear how good of a match him and Sophia are, which that was really great, especially because you just get to see more of her and her like, autism and how it's affected her and made her feel like she's not worthy and he also feels like he's not worthy because of how everyone is just like oh yeah you're the historian whatever and she listens to him because she gets so focused and like there's like a very good like match that were also like a tinge of like not hate to love but like they used to like annoy each other and now they're like a good little team and like <laughs> when he thought he was gonna die he like looked at her like candlelight hair and I don't know I just like really love them but I also like hypnosis dynamic with everybody like his moments hypnosis moments of just being like wanting to be part of the friend group and being like I brought food and it's like the wrong food and like he tries and like mm, you know like and he even kind of says like he was really with Enrique not just for this reason but like it was sort of helping him get in the group and like he just wants to be part of the group and he wants to be close to Severin who's like a brother to him and just like <laughs> and then Layla, I just was like so upset because I love her so much with just like her counting on the days until she's gonna die and then we find out that like the divine lyrics is really the divine liar and like 
that if it's played she's gonna probably fall apart and like die and just uh, and like she doesn't want Severin to know that she's dying and then he finds out from Enrique and just uh, yeah all that so that was just a lot of feelings and then we have this introduction of Eva Ava however it's pronounced for a character and that was an interesting dynamic because I think it was done fairly well but I still didn't love that because it's like I kind of suspected that her and is it Raslin Ruslin were the villains her especially from the get-go I'm like she has ulterior motives as the villain because she came in already like trying to get Severin I'm like what are you doing but I like that Roshni addressed that in the narrative of Layla being like I would rather just be your friend and you're a woman that's been trained that women should be against one another that we're competition I would I don't want to do this but I'm seeing that she's doing this and she's being really shady to me and I'm gonna stick up for myself but I hate that this is a situation so I love how that was handled but I think the villains in this one were just far weaker because I was already like these new people get introduced and I'm like who are you? You know, I'm just like, I think that you're a part of something else and I don't trust it. And like, I wanted to trust like the guy, the patriarch, but I was like, uh, I don't know. So when that was revealed, I wasn't like super shocked. Like, I think it could have gone either way, but I just, I was like, okay, like this kind of makes sense and I'm not like super blown away by that twist. I would have also liked to see more of Severin and Layla as like this fake dating thing because at the very end of that book, of the first book, I was just so excited for them to be like this fake dating mistress situation and we had some good scenes of that where like she's you know talking to him like in the bed and you know she's sleeping in the bed and they're going to the room together and like pretending to be whatever but like but since they were so secluded from everybody it wasn't as much of this like fake dating like we have to kiss, we have to be really affectionate. There was moments of that. Like in the, what was it, like the opera booth or something, they had like a little bit of that, but like I just wanted more of that, you know? Like it wasn't quite enough. I also wanted slightly more with Severin and the matriarch. Her like sacrifice at the end and that whole dynamic, like it just felt like it wasn't quite as resolved as I would have liked it to be. Like I just wanted more of that. Like it's brought up but I just wanted that to be more like resolved and them to have more time a little bit. It's not something that like broke the story for me, but like I just, I just wanted like a little bit more. So then we have the twist of him being, Severin, being from the, like the bloodline, the, like the lost muses, like bloodline, people that can read the books. And like, I really, I don't know how I feel about that because I really expected him at the end of the last book that he's actually like part of the fallen house is what I thought. That was my theory that she was like hiding from him. So now it was like, I pushed you away to protect you because of your bloodline and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, it was supposed to be like a line of women. Like even though Layla makes the most sense, like, I still would have preferred it to be her. I don't know. So then I'm like, okay, so it was Tristan part of the Fallen House then? Or was he like House Vanth? Because I see in the first book that Tristan had a cut like his, like Severin's, but that he was also like pushed away and whatever. So I was like, okay, was he House Vanth? Was he Fallen House? Like what was this? Exactly. So just trying to kind of like figure that out. And also just like, ugh, Severin just makes me so sad because he's like trying to be a god and trying to do all these things. And he's doing it to protect everybody, but it's like, Severin, no, like, come on, man. Like that's obviously not gonna work. Do you see these people? Do you see what this does? But like, obviously, I mean, it's like a good, it's a good arc to like explore, but I'm just like, dude, no. Um, so yeah, we'll see. So uh, at the very end there, like her, destroying the bug that had his like story in it so seeing like he didn't kill them like that wasn't what happened all of that and like his message to her is like destroyed and just like oh my god and like they're all separated again and like all that Ugh, this the final book is just gonna be like pull out my heartstrings why don't you like it's i don't even know what to expect really like from what's gonna happen what they're gonna try to do all of that like i just don't know i'm so excited um i just don't know what's gonna happen let me know your theories because I have no idea. So comment down below and let me know your thoughts on the Silvered Serpents. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.